Okay, so in this video, we're going to take a look in more depth at electromagnets specifically. So the first thing we're going to look at is actually why does the wire with a current in it have a magnetic field? So first of all, let's think about what a current actually is. So remember, there are two models for current. There was what scientists originally thought current was, the flow of positive charges called conventional current. And then there's what we now know it as, as the flow of electrons, so which we call electron flow. But regardless of the model that we are using, current is the movement of charge. And remember from the previous video that moving charges exert a magnetic force on other moving charges. So what we say is those moving charges have a magnetic field around them. So a current is just a way of making charges move, essentially. So if we have a current carrying wire, uh, we get a different type of field than we've seen before. So we get a circular field around the wire. And we can determine the field direction or put arrows on the field lines using the right hand corkscrew rule is called. So what you do is you point your thumb in the direction of conventional current, which remember goes from positive to negative. Uh, so that's what you can see on the diagram. And then the direction your fingers are tells you the direction of the field. So you can see the fingers from base to tip are going round in an anti-clockwise direction, looking from above anyway. So that's how those arrows have been added to the diagram. Okay, so if we actually test this out using iron filings, we get something that looks a little bit like this. Uh, so you can see the field lines going in circles around the electromagnet. And if it was done a little bit more carefully and over a longer period of time, you'd see the field lines get, the spacing between them gets bigger and bigger the further out you get as the magnetic field gets weaker. Okay, so that's around a straight current carrying wire. What if we wrap the wire up into a coil, which we a fancy name solenoid? Well, what we get is a field that looks very much like that of a bar magnet. So inside the solenoid, we get a fairly, uni what we call a uniform magnetic field, or they're all running parallel to each other. But outside the solenoid, it looks like the field of a bar magnet. Okay, so on the diagram, you can see we've marked north and south pole. So just to quickly identify how we know which direction those are, um, it depends what you see conventional current doing. So what I want you to do is imagine you're looking at this coil from the left hand end and you're looking at it as a cross section. What you would see is the current going round in a clockwise direction. Uh, so if you follow the wire around, you see it's going clockwise from that side. So that would tell that's what tells you it's a south pole. Whereas if you imagine looking at it from the north pole end, you would see the current going round in an anti-clockwise direction and therefore you're look you're at the north pole end so that's how we actually figure out which pole is where um, but if you don't understand that that's fine for now that's just a little bit of extra information okay so if we actually again use our iron filings to look at the field in a solenoid you can see in both diagrams we get the fairly uniform or parallel field line section in the middle and then outside the coil, we get the field much more similar to a bar magnet. OK, so with an electromagnet, one of the benefits of it is we can change how strong it is. Um, so firstly, how can we look at a magnetic field using iron filings and see how strong it is? Well, the strength is indicated by the flux density or the number of flux lines per unit area. So the higher the flux density, the stronger the magnetic field is at that point. So you can see looking at that diagram, as you move further away from the magnet, the spacing between the field lines gets bigger and bigger, which means the magnetic field strength decreases with distance from the magnet. But that's how we can actually see the strength of it. How do we know the direction of a magnetic field? Well, we can't see that using the iron filings. We need another device and we need a compass to allow us to see them. 
So if you put a compass in a magnetic field, it will align itself with the field. So you can see the compass needle goes parallel to the field line at the location that it's placed, and the needle will point towards the, the direction of the field lines heading towards the south pole there. Uh, so that's how we can actually figure out the field line direction. The compass will point towards the south pole. Uh, so again, if we have a look at some previous diagrams we've seen, we can see for the attracting magnets, we end up with a region of very high magnetic field strength in the middle, the two magnets. Whereas with the repelling magnets, we end up with a region of very low magnetic field strength because the flux density is very low. Now, some of you should hopefully have been a bit confused about what I've just said about compasses. Because what I just said is the compass needle will point towards the south pole. Because remember, field lines go from north to south. Uh, but those of you who actually use compasses, maybe you're orienteering or something, should know your compass points towards the north pole, or at least the magnetic north pole of Earth. So what you should realize at this point is, in fact, what we call the north pole of Earth is, in fact, technically a south pole. Uh, so the magnetic south pole of Earth is in the geographic north pole, uh, but we still call it the magnetic north pole for simplicity. And we refer to the north side of a magnet as the north seeking pole, essentially, is the way we kind of fix that issue. OK, so how can we actually change the strength of an electromagnet? Well, uh, one easy way of doing it is by increasing the, the current passing through it. So the higher the current, the faster the charges are moving through. Therefore, you get a stronger magnetic field. And if we are dealing with a solenoid type magnetic field, uh, electromagnet, if we have more turns or more coils, that will also increase its uh, magnetic field strength. Now with a solenoid, the other thing we can do is actually wrap it around a soft magnetic material. Because remember, soft magnet materials will align themselves with the external field applied, and that will give you an even stronger magnetic field overall. But the electromagnet must the wire must be insulated, otherwise you'll just get a current flowing through the, the iron that we typically use instead. Okay, so that's how we can make it stronger, but how can we change the field direction, which is another advantage of an electromagnet? Well, what we can do is, the easy way is reverse the current, so send the current the other way through the wire. And also, I've put this in brackets, if it's a solenoid, if you wrap the turns in the opposite direction, so instead of wrapping clockwise, you wrap anti-clockwise, that would also have the effect of changing the field direction. So on the left, we can see that the current, if we're viewing it from the left hand side, would be going anti-clockwise around the soft core there. And so that means that it's going to be a north pole that we're at the left hand side from where we're viewing it. Whereas on the right hand side, you can see the current actually goes clockwise around the core, which means we are going to be at the south pole end there. So if we wrap the wire the opposite way around the core, that would have the effect of reversing the poles of the electromagnet too. Okay, so one use for electromagnet, and there are lots, but one particular use is in a device called a relay. Uh, so if we have one in an electrical circuit, you'll see something that looks like this. What you can see on the left hand side is the circuit diagram for a solenoid or a coil, just uh, essentially wraps of, uh, wraps of coils. On the right hand side, we can see we've got a switch. So a relay is a combination of electromagnet and a switch. So the reason we use these is we have a lot of devices in electricity which require high power. So if we want to use a motor, if we want to use lights, those are going to need a lot of power. Whereas the, the devices we use for logic circuits, so for actually making decisions, are all low power. So some examples of those are not and or, or gates, which we'll come across later in the course. So essentially what we need is two separate circuits that are connected together. And that's what a relay is for. 
So the relays will allow your low power circuit to either activate or deactivate a switch, like you can see here, and therefore turn on or turn off uh, a high power circuit. So the advantage of that is it protects your low power components and it also protects the user. So like if you're turning on a car, you use a relay. So when you turn a key or push a button these days, what you're doing is you're turning on a low power circuit that activates a relay which turns on the car engine using the car battery. So that's where we'd use one of these. Okay, so if you want to actually see what the internal workings of a relay look like, uh, you can see we've got a stretched spring, which is keeping the contacts in their initial position. But when we activate the electromagnet, what that does is it applies a force to change the contact. So it will stretch the spring even further uh, and come down to hit the other contact, and that will activate or deactivate the external high power circuit. Uh, so it is a mechanical type device overall. OK, so what we're going to look at next is what happens if we put an electromagnet inside a permanent magnetic field? OK, so uh, let's say what we've done, we've got a permanent magnetic field and there's a north pole on the left and the south pole on the right. And we've got a current carrying conductor in that that we've switched it on and there's now a current flowing. So if we apply the right hand corkscrew rule, we can see the current is actually coming out of the page because we've got the uh, field lines going anti-clockwise around it. Uh, so my thumb is pointing towards me to line my fingers up with that. So what's going to happen here is the current carrying wire will experience a force upwards. So it will literally jump out of the magnetic field. If we do the opposite, so if we put the current into the page, uh, you can see that changes the field lines to the other direction. And what happens is you get a force downwards. And the way we see this, if we look at the diagrams on the right, is what we're doing is we're superposing two fields. So the field from the permanent magnets, we can see it's going from left to right because it goes from North Pole to South Pole. The field from the current carrying wire is going clockwise this time around the wire. And when we superpose those together, we get a region of very high flux density above the current carrying conductor, and we get a region of lower below it. And then the force goes from high flux density to low flux density. Essentially, it's trying to eliminate that very high region. Imagine those field lines kind of pushing each other apart. And that's how we know the direction of the force. It goes from high to low, and the wire will literally jump out of the permanent magnetic field. Okay, so that concludes this video looking at electromagnets.